Well, good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to morning prayer. It's Tuesday morning, Tuesday the 30th of June, and you're very welcome if you're joining us for prayer this morning. As always, you can follow along using the Daily Prayer app or by following the link in the post description. Let's take a moment of quiet just as we begin our time of prayer together. Loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are with us. We thank you that we can join together in this way to begin our day in prayer. Help us to do that now. Help us to pray. Help us to hear your word. Help us to know your presence and your peace with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm number 73 Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped, I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles, their bodies are healthy and strong, they are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills, therefore pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence, from their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore their people turn to them, and drink up waters in abundance. They say, How would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure, and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishment. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. Till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them on slippery ground, you cast them down to ruin, how suddenly they are destroyed completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? and earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion for ever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence, and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning continues in the book of Judges. 
and today we're in Judges chapter 9 verses 1 to 21. Judges chapter 9 verses 1 to 21. Abimelech. Abimelech, son of Jerubbaal, went to his mother's brothers in Shechem, and said to them and to all his mother's clan, Ask all the citizens of Shechem, which is better for you, to have all seventy of Jerubbaal's sons rule over you, or just one man? Remember, I am your flesh and blood. When the brothers repeated all this to the citizens of Shechem, they were inclined to follow Abimelech. For they said, He is related to us. They gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Berith, and Abimelech used it to hire reckless scoundrels who became his followers. He went to his father's home in Ophrah, and on one stone murdered his seventy brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, escaped by hiding. Then all the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo gathered beside the great tree at the pillar in Shechem to crown Abimelech king. When Jotham was told about this, he climbed up on the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted to them, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem, so that God may listen to you. One day the trees went out to anoint a king for themselves. They said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree answered, should I give up my oil, by which both gods and humans are honoured, to hold sway over the trees? Next the trees said to the fig tree, Come and be our king. But the fig tree replied, Should I give up my fruit, so good and sweet, to hold sway over the trees? Then the trees said to the vine, Come and be our king. But the vine answered, should I give up my wine, which cheers both gods and humans, to hold sway over the trees? Finally all the trees said to the thornbush, Come and be our king. The thornbush said to the trees, If you really want to anoint me king over you, come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, then let fire come out of the thornbush and consume the cedars of Lebanon. Have you acted honourably? And in good faith, by making Abimelech king, have you been fair to Jerubbaal and his family? Have you treated him as he deserves? Remember that my father fought for you and risked his life to rescue you from the hand of Midian. But today you have revolted against my father's family. You have murdered his seventy sons on a single stone and have made Abimelech the son of his female slave, king over the citizens of Shechem because he is related to you. So have you acted honourably and in good faith towards Jeroboam and his family today? If you have, may Abimelech be your joy and may you be his too. But if you have not, let fire come out from Abimelech and consume you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come out from you, the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo, and consume Abimelech. Then Jotham fled, escaping to Beer, and he lived there because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. The New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11 to the end. Luke 15, 11 to the end, the parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. <clears throat> he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. 
When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms round him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile the elder son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing, so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The elder brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. <coughs> In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. So let's pray. Father God, we pray for this day and the tasks that lie ahead of us. May we know your help and your presence in all that we do. Father, we pray for the world and its needs. 
We lift up people and situations to you that are on our hearts. And Father, we pray for the church and her life, for our witness here in Binley, for the steps forward uh, out of this crisis, for us to be able to worship together once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who are sick in body, mind or spirit. And we ask for your healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for members of our own families, for, uh, for friends of ours, for neighbours and for those in our church and the relatives of those members of our church. Lord, bring your healing, we pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for any who are in the midst of famine or disaster. We pray for those who are struggling with hunger. And we ask for your provision. We pray for those in this country who are in food poverty. And we ask for a way forward for those people to be provided for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for victims of abuse or violence or intolerance or prejudice everywhere. We pray for justice where there has been injustice. We pray for fair treatment. We pray for equal opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those who are bereaved and those mourning the loss of their own loved ones at this time. And we ask that you bring your comfort and your peace. Help people who are grieving right now. Help people who are preparing or planning funerals at this time. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in all of us the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who work in the medical and healing professions, for those who work for our NHS, for doctors and nurses, for midwives, for those who work in hospitals, those who work out in the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the people, our neighbours in the city of Leicester. So we hear about this, um, some more lockdown measures being put back in place in that city. And we just ask that you would stop the spread of infections in that city and everywhere. And that we could all face restrictions being lifted soon, as soon as possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. collect for today let us pray almighty god you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts whereby we call you father give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of god through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus gave us. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Well, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Have a good day and I'll see you for evening prayer tonight at 5.30. Take care. God bless.